it kind of stuck in my craw, so to speak, in the last week. I've talked to you before about the way you talk to God. And I've talked about how I talk to God. You know, there's a time to bow down to the floor. And there's a time to be on your knees. There's a time to do all of the above. The whole package of that. But just as I talked about my earthly dad, I've had, I talked to him a lot over the years. And uh, it wasn't a, you know, a stiff, rigid, formal thing when I talked to my dad. You know, if I was a smoker, I would have sat there and smoking cigars with dad, you know, casual. If I was a smoker, you know, just, just to add the casual to the thing. Um, and the Lord talked to me about this, that this week. And I have to say that I object to the way that people talk to God. They're so stiff and rigid, impersonal. Um, they're not prying and demanding enough from God. I've had the Lord tell me lots of times, you don't ask me for enough. You don't ask me for enough. Like he's insulted. I've got all this stuff, he says, and you don't ask me for enough. Look at all this stuff I got, the Lord says. Look at all, look what I've got. You don't ask me for enough. And the thing about how people talk to God, and I don't mean disrespectfully. Actually, I mean uh, loosen up. You know, when you're talking to God, loosen up. Have a conversation with him. And don't be afraid to be pushy with where you go in your dialogue with God. You know, I... I I've told the story about I prayed for a certain amount of money one time by a Friday and it didn't show up on a Friday and I'll tell you um, I was not happy about that and I wasn't shy to talk about it in front of God but he always knows what's up he can always answer the question he always has, he has a box of, he doesn't have one solution. He's got a whole box full of them. You know, he can say, oh, you don't like that flavor? Hey, here, try this. Uh, you don't like that flavor? I'll try this because I got a solution for everything. And what he said to me on that occasion was, you know, I believe God for X amount of money by Friday. And I didn't have it in my hand on Friday. Monday morning went to the mailbox and the check was in the mailbox. And he said to me, Checked, check the postmark on the letter, the date. I did. And he said to me, it was mechanically mailed as you had dictated. You had prayed for it and it had been issued. There was mechanics involved to get it from point A to point B. And that's what put it over the weekend. Now, if I had greater faith back then, I could have believed God that that money, that check showed up on Friday with the attitude of, I don't care how it gets here. You got to have an angel bring that to me. If, uh, if it blows out of the truck and the, the, the trade winds bring it to my place on Friday, don't care, so be it, if I had that kind of faith. But God's always got the solution. You, you got a question? He's got your answer, believe me. You're not going to stump him. Talking about dialoguing with God, just sit down and talk to him. Talk to him about stuff that's on the go right now. Like something, I saw something happen yesterday. Uh, throughout the family, I saw something that I didn't like. So I thought, well, um, I know what to do with this. So I considered it for about, it's something that needs attention. 
like get on it right now type thing. So in the last 20 hours, I went to the Lord and I said, look, I want you involved in this situation here. I want you involved like in here, like this, and I want you involved in there, and I want you involved in that. I want you sorting that out. If you have to shuffle some players, then you are shuffling the players or whatever is necessary, okay? Now, if you may have noticed, that had a bit of a business tone. That's family business. And when I open these videos, I say, let's do business for God. I don't say that to be cool. Uh, I don't say that to because uh, I'm looking to sell uh, videos on account of that phrase is so cool. That's not why I'm doing that. I've been saying that for decades. Open prayer meetings, all kinds of things. Okay, guys. Uh, it's sort of like saying, okay, guys, come together. You know, meeting come to order type of thing. I just say, okay, guys, let's do business for God. And it works. Everybody kind of, you know, snaps to a focus on the Lord, and let's do business for God. And we do very important business for God. We talk to the Lord. Uh, I will say, okay, what is important? Uh, you, over there, what's important in your life today? Uh, you must have something written down. Tell me, what should we pray about today for that? And then we take that thing to the Lord, and it's not stiff. It's not rigid. Uh, I'm looking fishing for a third word informal or excuse me formal it's not like formal with a tuxedo on and you know like holy smokes you know your tie better be pressed and your your suit better be pressed and your crease right in the straight of your you know, it's, everything's got to be perfect no 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 uh, when i roll into god's presence uh it's uh it's a case of let's talk <laughs> let's hash this thing out Let's be successful in doing business for God right here. Glory to God. So I encourage you. Talk. Say to the Lord, hey, we need to talk about something today. Uh, this thing over there is bugging me or, um, you know, uh, or you can you you might be thanking for the Lord. Lord you did this for me and thus and so and so and so and I really want to show my appreciation today maybe you want to give him a love offering maybe you want to how can I phrase that oh I've heard people use this phrase <clears throat> let's give the Lord a wave offering so they'll pull a, a long handkerchief out of their pocket and here's all these people in the auditorium and they're waving this hanky and they're saying Lord we're giving you a wave offering let me clue you into something um, I can be gentle when I say this and I can be diplomatic in Jesus name uh, so let me clue you into this do you know that when you give a wave offering you're supposed to be waving an envelope full of money. That's a wave offering. That's a real one. The other ones are, I'll let you put an adjective on that. A wave offering, you are waving something of value. You are waving something of value. You could be waving a, uh, a beefsteak as an offering and then giving it to the guy across the auditorium. The Lord said, give it to him. Your wave offering, you can wave offering anything. It could be the ownership for a car, pink slip for a car. Title deed to a chunk of land. You know, you could be saying, Lord, I'm giving this land to you. You do with this what I'll do whatever you tell me to do. A wave offering is an offering. You're not waving a hanky just to be. No, 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 no. You know, when God's talking to you about offering and wealth, he's looking to get wealth to you. He's not looking to take wealth from you. He's 
always looking to get wealth into your hands. He's not looking to steal from you. That's why it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because when you give, you have to visualize the huge harvest. Therefore, the giving is more blessed. Do you understand? When you give, you've provoked a harvest. I hope I said that right. I have a book called Where's My Harvest? I talk about harvest in there a lot. The Lord told me at one time, He said, from now on, He will say this until further notice. Whenever you mention the word give, you will mention the word harvest three times after the word give. You will mention the word harvest with a ratio of three to one. Mention give one time, mention harvest three times. Three to one. Three to one. I can prove it from the word. And in Jewish, in Hebrew, things, when something is said three times, it's extremely significant. It's not a minor, it's a major. The repetition of something three times. I think it's John 3, 3, 5, and 7. Three times in one big breath, Jesus said, you must be born again, you must be born again, you must be born again. How important do you think that is? In other words, hey guys, you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. Uh, hell is a long-term commitment, and you don't want anything to do with it. Uh, inflation. Another thought, inflation cannot touch you when you walk by faith. Inflation cannot touch you when you walk by faith. Inflation cannot touch you when you walk by faith. Are you a tither? Are you an alms giver? Are you an offering giver? If you are, then you are, in my view, you are a harvester, harvester, harvester. The anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing breaks the yoke. Okay, I'm going to finish off with this. Anybody that's that's had any kind of time in, in the Word will have seen many references to a sower sows the Word or a sower sows the seed. There's huge mention of Farming and seed in the Bible, in God's Word. It's all over the place. Planting, which is sowing, and then harvesting, or reaping, harvesting, harvesting. The Lord told me this this morning. He said, agriculture is close to the heart of God. The word refers to seed time and harvest. Listen, if, the, if there's a seeding time, there's a harvesting time. Get it? If there's a seed time, there's a harvest time. Remember that. I tell that to preachers everywhere. You guys, quit flapping your face off about sowing, sowing, sowing all the time. Any idiot can sow. Teach them how to harvest, harvest, harvest. Build that into them. 
Watch what your offering does in the next 9 to 12 months when you teach them about harvesting instead of sowing all the time. Any fool can sow. It takes skill to harvest. Agriculture is close to the heart of God. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Scripture says, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Did you get that? That was a, that was a good drink of cool water. Seed time and harvest, it shall not cease. Some madmen in the world have been attacking agriculture. Some madmen in the world have been attacking the cattle business. They are madmen. They've gone mad. God's word says that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That's a lot of moves. The word says God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You tell that to somebody. You tell that to somebody this week. This crap that the madmen have been saying negatively against cattle and against agriculture and the fertilizers available for agriculture, they have lost their mind. I'll say it again. Agriculture is close to the heart of God. Seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest shall not cease. If the devil had his way, which he's not going to have his way, he would have people starving to death because some worship the earth and do not understand the harvesting of abundance. They are strangers to the covenant. When it comes to what the covenant says, they say, duh. They don't know. They are strangers to the covenant. Remember what I said. The word says, my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And I'll, I'll tell you this in my language. Everything in the earth is seed diamond harvest. Everything is. Look around, you'll see what I'm talking about. Everything is seed time and harvest. Everything is seed time and harvest. The kid in the schoolyard punches the other kid. The kid gets mad. The harvest immediately comes to the other kid. Get it? Sow the seed, there was the harvest. Don't pay any attention to these madmen that have lost their marbles that are speaking against food, that are speaking negatively against cattle, that are poo-pooing the idea of propagating agriculture, food. They've lost their minds. Be encouraged. God's not putting up with this. He's not putting up with that garbage. He's not putting up with that garbage. When you hear something like that, you point your finger at that, and you say, I rebuke that trash in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that trash in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that garbage, that lie. That is a corrupt communication. And you say, stop. Stop that corrupt communication in Jesus' name. So I'm going to sign off with this and say, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. I'll see you next time. Now available, Randy Varsava's book, Where's My Harvest? Full of godly principles and testimonies. Where's My Harvest will help you build your faith to receive God's abundance in your life. 
Also available are Patty Varsoffa's three books in the Today's Virtuous Woman series. Books 1 and 2 will encourage you in your walk with God as a virtuous woman, based on Proverbs 31. Book 3 is a cookbook full of delicious recipes along with uplifting scriptures. All these books are conveniently available online at Amazon.